Yeah, g'day guys. Today's going to be the final of the fire trailer. So uh, we'll finish her off and we'll go and light a fire, eh? Here we go. Found a new use for the crane. Just whack one said it's a tiny dick. Bit of a tight budget on this one. So, so far, uh, we've got, I've put a, a bolt through all the way through the chassis to keep that in place so the tank's not going anywhere. I've also put a strap up over the top of the tank. Um, so it's going to keep it on the trailer and not go anywhere. Not that this is going at any great speed, but use those little lugs down there. And the tank unit fits perfectly. It's like it was meant to be there, really. Uh, and you can take this whole skid off and put it on a ute if need be or something of that nature and use the trailer for something else. But the plan is just to keep it on there and park it down near the dam access and use it if ever needed to. But we're going to test it out and everything. We'll get it running and we'll, uh, we'll get it rolling. So anyway, uh, let's get all these fittings out and uh, start putting the, uh, putting the bits together make it all look legit yeah so we've got a fair bit of fiddling to do because that's what you do with little projects we've got the original uh fitting here uh from the tank uh from the ibc and we've got to get it to the inlet on the pump but we've also got to have a feed from the dam like you know in the previous video so we've got that access point. So we need to be able to switch from one to the other. Now to do that, I've got a, a two-way ball valve. I've never seen one before. Didn't even know they existed, but that's what we've got. And uh, we've got to hook up the fitting up to the bottom of the reel. As well as when we draw from the dam, it comes in from the dam, goes into the pump, and we need to either go through this valve and then run a line up to the top of the tank and feed into the tank. But then we need to be able to turn that off and then hook up a hose either to here. So I might take all this from that side because that's a cam lock, an inch cam lock. Put that inch cam lock on this side and then just put some fittings from here across and join it onto the hose reel. So we can have the hose reel is available full time. This will go up to the top of the tank as needed when I'm filling up the tank and that will be over here for another hose so we can just use it for not just a fire unit but just a if you get a water the garden maybe so here we go Those who've never put thread tape on a pot before, there's a wrong way and a right way. Because if you're going to put another fitting on here, which is the purpose of the thread tape, it will undo 
if you put it on the wrong way. So you've got to think about it in the way of putting the tape on the same way you would turn the new fitting on. So if the fitting is a normal right-handed thread, you just go around that way. Now different colour thread tapes are different thicknesses. You only need to go around a couple of times. And there's a really good seal. So when you screw that on, it's not going to unpeel the thread tape. So So here we go again. You follow the thread, like you see where the start is, and then it goes around that way. So you just keep following around. And you can't really go wrong. Just keep it firm so it's not slack. And then pull it, because it'll break, and then you just roll it in there. So you can't really find the joint anyway, but when it, the new fitting screws onto it, or you screw this into the fitting, it's not going to undo that tail. Because this being a BSP thread, it's tapered. It's not. It's smaller there than it is there, so it actually gets tighter when you screw it into whatever fitting you're screwing it into. For those who've never done plumbing fittings before. Well, irrigation fittings, these are more so than plumbing. So. Here's that two-way valve I was telling you about before. I've never seen one myself. The little handle tells you the direction that it's supposed to be at. At the moment, the water can either come in or out of that one, and then you just change it, and it can come in and out of that one, and the other side's blocked. So, two-way valve, two-way ball valve, especially in this size. It wasn't a cheap item, but it's certainly going to be needed for this, so Let's uh, let's hook it up.
pretty much all done. Uh, I'll put this little flap up here, which you probably saw before. I'll put a little chain on it so it hangs there, which is nice. So that'll just give the uh, pump unit a bit of protection off the weather. Also, if uh, it overflows, like that's not a tight fit, that's just a, a drop in fit. So when the tank unit itself overflows, it uh, won't go down on, on top of the motor. Also put a little uh, sling and a bung in there to keep any gunk out. And also that line will be full of uh, water. So it'll be pre-primed as such. So if you follow it down there, it's got this two-way valve. So one way is from the dam uh, or the uh, a tank reservoir or something because, hang on, I'll just show you my tank. This is a 30,000 litre tank with a cam lock fitting on it, so which is uh, required uh, by a local council and uh, it's a fire pre prevention. So this tank holds 30,000 litres and is the runoff from the shed air workshop. So I can easily just hook it up. I've got an extension uh, hose with an extra set of fittings that I can just hook it up if need to. Uh, but I'd rather be drawing out of the dam. So let's go for a little drive down the hill and back it into its little location and see if we can get it running. I've checked the oil and it's got spark and I put a bit of fuel in there. I just haven't really had any water in there to give it a test run because you don't need to spin them up without any water in the housing. Apparently it doesn't do the seals any good. So we'll uh, get it down the dam and see how we go. Certainly looks the part. Let's uh, let's go. Let's get down to the dam. So I've got the first client, uh, Gary's come to uh, pick up the tank. Uh, so let's see how he travels going up the hill. No issues at all. Let's go and see him put out a fire.
So we picked a really nice day to uh, try and burn this. Uh, it's really overcast and storms are on the forecast, so it's really hard to see a bit of sky. Oh, there's a bit of sky. So I think we'll be uh, we'll be right with this. So we've got our eye on and we'll uh, we'll get into it. So what we were actually doing just there was wetting that tree that's next to where the fire is so we'd have a bit more control <laughs> it'll just stay alight So we're going to uh, now put out these fires, we've controlled them quite well, so uh, we're just going to start this up and Gary can knock himself out. What do you reckon, Gary? Good bit of gear. Brilliant job, mate. Brilliant job. Certainly uh, clinches it, doesn't it? Oh, definitely. Plenty of, uh, plenty of pressure. Exactly what you needed. Yeah. A lot of distance when you're onto it. <laughs> well, hopefully never need to need it. Or uh, anything other than fun. Yeah. It's good to control a an oversized campfire. <laughs> so guys, that uh, fire is pretty much done now. Uh, we've quenched it and uh, it's kept all clear. There you guys, so that's the fire trailer uh, demonstration. <laughs> Bit of smoke and uh, it certainly put it out. We kept everything under control. So it was so much easier with that fire unit. Uh, glad we made it. <coughs> for the smoke and steam. But uh, it's available for uh, all of my neighbours and Gary being one of them. Uh, he's able to come and grab it as needed. As you saw, we pulled out of the near where the dam was, the access. Hopefully you can hear us over the background there. The old fire is just smouldering while Gary puts the last little bit of it out. Guys, if you like this build, uh, give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't already and click the old notification bell and we'll be able to uh, let you know when new stuff comes along i've got a few new builds coming uh, really soon so uh, guys thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one see you